All right, folks, it's time for us to head to the Zahab region in the Red Sea. Ah, the Red Sea. That's my favorite sea. So, yeah, guess why it's my favorite sea? Is it because it's red? Yes. Wow. I, I, I just had this hunch. Yeah. Yeah, that looks like the Red Sea, all right. Yup. In a region that doesn't exist. Crevice is like a hole, right? Yeah. Holes all up in this adventure. I like that this game doesn't bullshit you. Like, oh, there's the abyss. You can't dive there! Until you go up and it's like, oh, here, you can dive in the abyss now. Yeah. Oh, this is a grand plan. Ready? Air station. We get the Navy to fly a bunch of jets and... No, no, no. It's much cooler. It's a tank you can use to refill your other tanks. Like a gas station, but with air. Air being a gas. Look, that's not what he means. I know. Honk. No, you couldn't do an animation just chucking a thing over the, the side? No. Not gonna deep six it? Just says it is, alright. Yeah. Yay. Try not to die. Hmm, choose your dive partner. Choose your destroyer. Hmm, well, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Well, technically, GG has the fire on his wetsuit. That's why he likes your fire, because he likes fire. Well, no, Sakurai likes our fire. Oh. So... They hmm. sound so similar. I think I'm going to take Oceana with, because, you know, yeah. thematics. Yeah. Also, we're not going to do that thing at all. Oh, wow, a Coral Valley. we got to check that out. I know. <laughs> Screw that. we we, we got to go look at Coral first. We have to acclimate to the region. Also, I don't know how I feel about jumping in there with Oceana. We gotta let her chill out first. Look at a fish. She needs her fucking hit of seeing cute fish. Yeah. This is gonna be some major, you know, emotional baggage and whatnot. We need to go into that, you know, with a clear head. And a clear heart. Well... Hi, John Eric. We're not doing that. Have fun. Notice how we're suddenly a couple nautical miles away. Yeah, we're, we're kind of going to go look at coral. It's going to be fish. great. Other fish. I'm sorry, John Eric. I'm seeing other fish. <laughs> yeah. All right. Lots of new fish. Let's get going. Ah, Miniata Grouper! Yeah. Territorial as fuck. 
Yep. Oh, these are here too. Great. Yeah, they're everywhere. The powder blue tang. Yeah. It's like a blue tang, but they're found in the Indian Ocean. Yes. Also, it has a little sting above its tail. Just like the blue tang. Yep. Yellow bar angelfish. They're very popular. Look at them. Yeah, they're neat looking fish. I like their bar. <laughs> it is their most notable trait. Alright, zoom spot. I'm gonna get in. Once I can see past all the fish. This game does a thing. They're called both Yellow Band and Yellow Bar. Hey. Three spot Dasilis. That's a Dasilis. So the interesting thing about these, I think we may have mentioned this in the original game, but I'm going to restate it anyways, is that the young ones behave just like, say, an enemy fish do, and they have the symbiotic relationship with sea anemones, but the adult school, like, you know, larger reef fish. Oh, well, it's kind of neat. No time to talk, unicorn fish. I got a horn. Yup. Young ones don't got a horn. Sardines! <laughs> I don't have anything to say about sardines. Yeah. How do you feel about pizza with sardines, Red? Not a fan of it. Not a fan either. Not a fan. Oh look, you discovered this in that zoom spot. <laughs> this was a zoom spot, not a pan spot. All right, now to zoom. Oh, oh. sea goldies. Sea goldies, making out. They do Such as their wound. <laughs> oh, sapphire devils. Sapphire devils are cool because they're not actually blue. Their cells, the scales reflect certain blue lights, and they can actually change colors and shimmer. But when they die, they, they pretty much turn black. Huh. That is neat. That is cool. That is neat. That is super neat. Which is pretty cool. Cool. Well. Well. No, there's smaller fish to look at. The whale will be there. We will get to you, whale, in due time. Patience. Hello. <laughs> Gotta look at this tiny little grouper. Funny thing, you don't ever see the adult form of the humpback grouper in this game. Huh. Yep. It's got dots. Yep. You can kind of see them. Little grouper. Hey, group. Grouping all around. Group, group, group. See what else we can find. Hmm. Touch that hole. That's oh, more th three spots. Oh yes, boxfish. Yep, yellow boxfish juveniles. Now, an interesting thing about these is that they are the icon for the game on the Wii menu. It's another one you only see the young for. You don't see the adult stage of these fish. They're really cute, though. Yep. When they get older, they stop being yellow. They sort of turn brown. Not as cute. Yellow is inherently a cuter color than brown. They're bite. They bite. They'll take a bite of your finger and poke them. Nasty little fish. Generally a bad idea to actually poke fish in real life. Ah, uh, the forceps carrier. Things are weird because sometimes they just float upside down. That's how they rest. They just kind of lay on their backs. There's this guy. In the previous game, this guy didn't have his specific name. 
Did they just develop the specific name since then, or did they just more, or did they do their research better? Huh. Uh, got the name since then. Congrats, Platycephalus. Congratulations, Bartail Flathead. Yep. Everybody I'm clap for the Flathead. <laughs> oh my God, that Zoom spot had a cinematic hidden in it. I already made that joke. Well, this one's different. It's not just panning. It's kind of like slide panning. Just think you find slide panning is in fact a pan. It was, it was zoom. It was zoom panning. Hey, look, zoom there's slide. polyps of some kind. Ah, polyps. I love polyps. Polyps are horrifying. That's why I like them. I can relate. Can you? Yes. Basilisk. For a second there, it sounded like you said basilisk. No, no. That'd be much more exciting. If, if, if you see a basilisk, the best thing to do is not shout basilisk, because people are going to look to see the basilisk. Whenever you see a basilisk, the best thing is to not see a basilisk. Yeah, just don't look at anything. Don't see it. Just know it's in the proximity. Just don't, don't look. Now, there is something to keep an eye out in this area. There's a few things hidden on the rocks that are hard to see. If you don't know they're there, you will not find them. Yeah. You just won't see them. These they are not them. Yeah, these are just untouchable fucking starfish. Yeah, for some reason, they're just... Don't give a fuck about these starfish, I guess. Yeah, that's rude. Why, why, doesn't, why don't they give a fuck about these starfish? They're so cool. I want to look at them. I want to interact with them. I want to poke the starfish! Don't poke starfish. Shake my fist. Oh! Ooh! Ray! Ray! Ray's not here. Ray! Sweet baby Ray! I love the pattern on these. Got a long, long tail. The leopard That's why whip, it's ray. whip ray. Yes. The trivia for that fish just talks about sharks and rays are similar. Yes, because they're related. Rays have a large brain relative to their body weight, though. They're considered smarter than the average fish. They form harems. Of course they do. You know, like yes, the anime. Yeah, we'd like your anime. Yeah. Tiny little goby. Don't mind me. So with these things, they when they mate, they produce a batch of eggs, and the both parents will actually protect the eggs. But then after they hatch, the young just kind of float away. It's a goby with a like, They're like little spiders. They're like little spider fish, really. Their family name is not their actual name, though. That's actually not their proper name. What do you mean? Or are their species name. They're nameless. They or were nameless when goby. this game came out. Yes. They have one now, though. Yes. Goby done Rivulatus. I know. That's, that's what reefs are like. Reeftastic. Yup.
corner. My sense is tingling. I wonder if we'll find a coin that's related to this fact. Or maybe we'll find this. Yeah, maybe I'll just find, you know, in that barrel sponge. Yeah. When you think about it, that, that butterfly's fish is hanging out in that sponge's hole. Whatever. Keep on keeping on. No, I'm ready to look at you. Yeah, you did. It is, in fact, still there. I'm trying to look at everything else, though. There's this giant pile over here. Oh, man, what's in this one? Oh. All right, I got this. So Mars is the fourth planet from the sun and probably the one most close to Earth in terms of attributes. It Mars is, is the Roman the... god of war and the protector of agriculture. The month of March, named for him, was the first of two months that his festivals were held is to celebrate the planting on? season and the beginning of the fighting season. Oh, okay. In October, he was thanked for the harvest, and now that the fighting season was over, his protection of the troops. I guess. In Roman mythology, Mars represented military power as a way to secure peace. He was the father of Romulus and Remus with a human woman, and coupled with his relationship with Venus was the father of Rome itself. Venus was the divine mother of the hero Aeneas, celebrated as the Trojan refugee who founded Rome several generations before Romulus had laid out the city walls. His sacred animals were the wolf, one of which nursed the abandoned infants Romulus and Remus until a farmer found them, and the other was a woodpecker. Plutarch notes that the woodpecker is sacred to Mars because it is a courageous and spirited bird and has a beak so strong that it can overturn oaks by pecking them until it has reached the innermost part of the tree. I've already seen you. Yep. You're pretty, though. I don't look at you anyways. Where are you hidden things? I know you lurk. Maybe the people at home have seen it. Could be. Yeah, but it's not on screen yet. Well, I'm sure we passed over some. Might have. In fact, I'm pretty sure we have. If you're not looking for it, you won't see it. But if you're looking for it, you'll see it. Like this one. There you go. <laughs> Crown of Thorn Starfish. Well, they like to poke that starfish. Which isn't really advisable, because they, they do kind of, they're kind of venomous. Yeah. That, the amount of poison and the type of poison they have is, in fact, fatal to humans, so... Uh, it actually eats coral. Kills it dead. Funny thing is that, uh, is that conch star shellfish actually eat these type of starfish. They can also survive in polluted water, so pollution kind of encourages these things, which kills the reef faster. Our lovely humphead wrasse friends, though, could totally eat those. And another th interesting thing about them is that uh, that small numbers of them actually help encourage reef growth, just by eating, you know, large ones so younger ones can grow. Hmm. Yeah, this crevice is... But yeah, apparently the crown of thorns is notable to poke, but not the red one. Yep, apparently so. Curious fissure. Sea turtles. If only we had finished a quest, we could quest the quest with Sea Turtle Quest. There's some spots. Take a look at them. Oh. Well, hey. Pegasus, the winged horse, is one of the Ptolemaic constellations. The child of Medusa and Poseidon, Pegasus' hooves created springs that make you good at poetry if you drink from them. Pegasus is a flying horse that makes pools that makes poets. Yup. Kind of the horrifying child of Medusa and Poseidon, when you think about it. They can't all get the looks like Chrysler got. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Oh, hello. These guys are also kind of hard to see. It depends. There's some where they're just standing on coral they kind of clash against. Yeah, but some of them are a little... Yeah. Some of them are easier. It's, it's how nature works with them. They do have camouflage. The interesting thing is that the first part of their uh, scientific name is derived from uh, Palinrus, the helmsman of Enos's ship. Cool shit. 
It's because they wander. Yes. Wander, wander, wander. Very good. The little legs. Look at all of these little fish we've seen. Thank you for pointing them out, Oceana. Look, she's... Let her, let her look at the little fish. Maybe there's something on <laughs> that knob-shaped rock. Aquarius, the water bearer, is the oldest constellation of the zodiac. Aquarius was associated with the flooding of the Nile in Egypt. In Greek myth, it may represent Ganymede, a youth considered so beautiful, either Zeus, Eos the dawn goddess, or Zeus's eagle, Aquila, acting for Zeus, kidnapped him into serving as the cupbearer of the gods. Either way, Zeus is the one who ended up with him, so whatever, Ganymede. Really weird. Greek gods, that's what they do. Uh, Oceana, I'm kind of worried about you. I hope this isn't too traumatic. She'll be fine. This is very emotional and stressful. It's very emotional and stressful, me rubbing my face on this mushroom-shaped rock. No, we're... we're I'm familiarizing myself! We're distracting her from the emotional complexity of the situation. I mean, we are literally going to be going into the abyss, looking for her dead dad's dead remnants. We're actually looking for the other part of a flute, but... But it's associated with and pro possibly near. Yeah, I mean... That's just some pretty heavy shit, Red, you have to admit. I think you're just being weird. No, no, I, I think I'm being very thoughtful here. Oh, it's a little weird. Hello. Hey! Another starfish we can interact with. Why can't we interact with another starfish, Red? Mm hmm because it's red. It's dumb. We're not very it's social. Dumb. It's dumb and I hate it, and now I'm gonna do a thing talking about starfish myself! I know! Starfish, or sea stars, are echinoderms of the class Asteroidea. Alright, I'm in. Where we have bilateral symmetry, they have a radially symmetrical body consisting of a central disc surrounded with five or more arms. Their physiology only gets weirder once you add in the fact that the bottom of their quote-unquote arms are in fact covered in tube-like feet, used for both moving themselves and food around, that they have a mouth at the center of their body, that they use to expel their stomach to digest food, and the fact that they have primitive light-sensing eyes on the tip of each of their arms. That all being said, they are bilaterally symmetrical as larvae, which goes to show that even some of our more distant and bizarre cousins ultimately share a similar background with us. A bit. Let's face it, they're, they're kind of weird. Starfish are typically opportunistic scavenger predators, feasting on pretty much anything they can get their leg feats on. Different species will sometimes specialize on specific types of food, like always in the specialization versus generalization evolutionary tug of war. Overall, they eat things like microalgae, sponges, snails, bivalves, stupid idiot fish or too much of an idiot to get out of the way. The fuck is wrong with you fish? Get the hell out of here! Idiot? <laughs> now this jerk has to save you. Dumbass. But seriously, fuck you, starfish. Starfish have a number of other weird things they can do. Some can regenerate arms. Some can asexually reproduce by either fission, butting off their central disc, or by their arms being cut off and growing into whole new, entirely separate starfish. Yeah, a single arm can become an entirely new starfish. That's kind of weird. Also, they do the normal reproduction thing too, with eggs and gonads and sperm and whatnot. They even have separate sexes, which is a thing, I guess. Starfish are ancient. 
Ancient. The first echinoderms, their family, namely the sea urchins, appeared in the Cambrian, and then the first starfish started to appear not much relatively later during the Ordovician. Which means they were hanging out with cool guys like nautiloids, trilobites, early brachiopods, and so on. They've kept pretty much the same basic four plan since this point, though they have a number of varying families differing in characteristics such as number of plates, structure of plates, the structure of their tubes, the arm rigidity and number of muscles in said arms, the characteristics of their tubes, and a number of other weird things that confuse even taxonomists. Their phylogeny is very, very confusing. There's like seven different groups and seven different families, and we're not quite sure how many of them are actually separate, and even where certain starfish fall into them. It's kind of weird. They're just weird animals. It's kind of... Starfish, you're just confusing. Why you gotta be like that? Still pretty cool. I like them. You know, they're neat. The stars. Space. Space is the place. Sky's the limit. And that happened. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Wonderful. Starfish are pretty cool. So yes, the Red Sea. It's actually a very popular area for diving, just because it has a lot of <laughs> really good clear reef areas with a lot of nice diversity in the kind of Indian Ocean sort of splash off into the Red Sea. It's got a lot of neat shit. A lot of neat, nice diving. Red Sea, of course, being between Egypt, Sudan, and Saudi Arabia. Well, Egypt in general has been a very popular tourist spot in the past. Yes. And, you know, political situations that are current aside, you know, it's... It's still Saudi Arabia. Yep. See, this one I missed, and we totally went by this one. Yep. He's just on a rock. See? Yeah, I know. He looks like he sticks out, but if you're not looking for things, you know... I wasn't looking for him, and I saw him. Well, the first time around, you probably didn't. Probably not. Yeah, He's but I'm just saying, like, camouf... camera. Oh, well, maybe. I'm just saying, like, with this kind of, kind of a camouflage... Right? Help, oh, Charles, again. Uh, with camouflage, you know, it's just kind of how it works. It's subtle. We, as, you know more complex kind of intellectual beings. We have the ability to... Somebody thinks very highly easier. of himself compared to these things. No, look, I'm just saying, we, we we do have the ability to discern things better from the surroundings, but it depends, you know, how much movement there is, how well you're looking, you know, how you look at it. Yeah, unless things hunt by smell. It's true. Camouflage doesn't really help. No, it doesn't. Smell. Let's see a smell camouflage. Smell of flage. Same with flange. Ah, another whale. I guess I'm going to talk about this one. Oh. Very trusting whales, which is why they're fucked. Yeah. Hello there, Mr. Boat. What's that you got there? That a harpoon? That's pretty neat. Can I see that? Sigh. Very trusting whales. Very beautiful whales. Yay. Pay attention to me. <laughs> you riding on my head there, guy? That's cool. I'm cool with it. Make him sound like a catfish. <laughs> I just imagine all sea animals sound like that. Racist. It's a kind of the underwater acoustic. No, it's not. It'll just kind of echo out like that. Ah. <sighs> 
Well, I think we've we've delayed the inevitable long enough. It's a fun time fucking off to just look at other fish. Yeah, but I think it's I think it's time. Time for us to dare to dare the abyss again. Different abyss. This time this time it's not just physically spooky. It's emotionally spooky. And that's the spookiest kind of spooky of all. What about skeletons? Ah. <sighs> what if it's a skeleton of your dad? And then it's both kinds of spooky. <laughs>